So in this question here, we've got a parametric equation here defined by t, and we've got x, which is a function of t, y is a function of t, and z is a function of t. So it's a three-dimensional curve, which is what's being sketched here. And x is 5 cosine 2t, y is 5 sine 2t, and z is 2t, where t is between 0 and 5 pi. Now, we want to calculate the length of this arc. Well, this arc actually makes a helix. So it will look something a little bit like this as it's going around. So we'll kind of create that kind of impression. Now, what we want to do to calculate the length of that. So what we need is some formulas and some rules before we can move forward. So when we're calculating an arc length, we need to know it only traverses through t once from 0 to 5 pi in this case. And we need to know that the derivatives of these are continuous. So let's start with that. Let's find the derivative of x, y and z. Now we see that x, y and z are functions of t. So we can write those derivatives as x dot. So we can write them as x dot. So just that just means dx dt. So this here is just the same as dx dt. OK, so normal rules to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And with the chain rule, we need to multiply by this 2 with this constant. So then we've got minus 10 sine 2t. So the input doesn't change taking derivative. Now, this one here, y is given as 5 sine 2t. Now, again, y, if we take the derivative of that, we're looking for dy dt. So we can write that as y dot 5 sine 2t. Again, taking the chain rule, 2 times 5 is 10, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So we've got 10 cosine 2t. And then the derivative of this, same thing again, dz dt, so we can write that as z dot. Derivative of that, nice and straightforward, simply 2. OK, so that's our derivatives. Now what we want to know is, are these derivatives continuous? Because that's another rule we need when calculating the arc length. Now sine and cosine is continuous, and 2 is a constant, so that's absolutely fine. So we're pretty well straightforward to go on now to calculate this arc length. So what we want now is the formula. Now, the formula is an integral. So here, we're in three-dimensional plane. So we need three inputs along here. So it's an integral from 0 to 5 pi. So I'm just going to write it as the general formula now. So A to B, that's our curve C. That's what we're looking for. So curve C from A to B. And then we want the square root of... Uh, and then inside we input these derivatives and square them. So each derivative is squared. So x dot is squared. Add that with y dot squared and add that with z dot squared. So that just means those derivatives squared. That's not the second derivative. And then integrate that as these are all functions of t. It's all integrated with respect to t. So that's our curve C. And that's our parameterization. So what we need to do now is just plug in the values and let's see if we can integrate it. So the length will equal 0 to 5 pi. And then all we simply do now is put in the values of our derivatives. Minus 10 sine 2t. So minus 10 sine 2t all squared. And then the next one is 10 cosine 2t, all squared. And then this one here is just 2, so it's just 2 squared. And then that's dt, keeping these all separate from our calculations, taking care of that. OK, now this dt obviously is not in the square root, so I just put a line down for that. OK, right, now let's do some algebra on what's going on inside here. So now, still from 0 to 5 pi, square root term 
still stays. That's just the DT. Right, let's square this off inside. So minus 10 squared gives us a positive 100. Sine squared, that's as it says. And then the import won't change. That stays as 2t, we don't square that. So I'll just put a bracket around that. Next one here, square this, we've got 100, cosine squared and 2t. So 100, cosine squared and 2t, and plus two squareds, four. Okay, now we can use the famous trig identity here, cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. So if we get a sine squared and a cosine squared out of this, then we could be looking good. So now we've got from zero to five pi. Square root, let's take the 100 out. And then we've got sine squared 2t plus cosine squared 2t plus four. Okay, well, that's uh, no problem for us at all. Sine squared t, 2t plus cosine squared 2t, that just cancels out and that just becomes one. So now our integral is from zero to five pi of the square root. Now we've got 100 plus four. So it's 104 inside the square root. And then that's with dt. Now notice here we haven't got any of our variable t. So integral of that from zero to five pi, we just simply go straight into our integration and we've got square root of 104 times five pi minus this times zero, which is just zero. So I can leave it at that. So that's our answer. Now we could just do a little bit of simplification here. So let's just bring it up here just to generate our answer. Square root of 104 using thirds is square root, uh, square root of 26 times two. So two root 26, and then that can times by five pi. So now we're up to 10 pi times root 26, which is just over five. So we're just over 50 pi here. So plug that into our calculator, we'll get something that's approximately 160.2 for one decimal place. So that's the arc length of this helix. Okay.